Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to be back with you uh, as Greg has already welcomed you. If you're visiting with us today or it's your first time back with us in a long time online as well this morning, so good to have you with us. And I believe that this is a day that God is gonna speak to you in a fresh way. Uh, I've got some things that you are gonna have heard through your life But today I'm believing that God is going to speak to you in a fresh way, that you'd have a fresh revelation of the purposes of God in your life. Um, We were away last weekend. We were in New Zealand for the first time. And we were over there, uh, part of some meetings with Franklin Graham. And uh, he was in three cities over there. And over that week, about 2,000 people, 2,000 Kiwis made a commitment to Christ. And uh, so fantastic to see that. And uh, then we had a few days away as well. So kia ora to all of our Kiwi friends. And uh, it's great to be back with you. And a state election yesterday. And it uh, feels like that every time that we vote and uh, as far as the political system goes, it's more and more important. Can I encourage you as a church, let's not get weary. Let's continue to believe that God is positioning, uh, that God is in control and that He wants to continue to see His kingdom grow and expand. And so let's continue to believe that He is at work. There's been people in our church that uh, put themselves up for election. And I say well done to all of you that uh, stepped into that space, all those that volunteered on uh, various polling booths yesterday as well. So Why don't we take a moment to pray? Loving God, thank You that You are with us today. Your presence fills this place and is here to speak to each person in the room and who is watching online. And we thank You for uh, yesterday, for our state election. We pray uh, for our government and we ask that You would continue to bless them and particularly guide them. Our hope remains in You, our trust is in the one who sits above uh, political parties, the one who sits on the throne. And today as we come to Your Word, I pray it would pierce our hearts, convict us, encourage us, challenge us and draw us closer to You in Jesus' Name. Amen. As you've heard, our church multiplication uh, project has been going on. We're praying about whether there's new services Uh, that we can start as a church community, whether there's new sites, new congregations uh, for each of us as we go about the things that God has called us to, there will be missional stories, missional opportunities for us to engage with people. And that's what the message is all about today. Then towards the end of our service, if you are not walking with Jesus, if you've never surrendered your life to Him, or if you're somehow drifted away from Him, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to Him in a fresh way, perhaps for the first time or as recommitting your life to Him. That is an exciting opportunity. And then after that, we've got some people that are going to be baptised. We've got some people who are going to be baptised. So if you've got your Bible today, Uh, You can open up or your device. John chapter 4 is the passage of Scripture that we're going to look at. But I just want to set it up for you. John chapter 3 comes before John chapter 4. And both of these chapters are one-on-one encounters that Jesus had with people. In John chapter 3, Jesus had an encounter with Nicodemus. Uh, In John chapter 4, Jesus had an encounter with a woman at a well in Samaria. In John chapter 3, verse 16 is probably the most well-known verse of Scripture. And I pray this morning that it would be a fresh revelation to you because the things that Jesus gave us shouldn't get old or out of fashion for us. Why don't you say John 3, 16 with me this morning? Come on online as well. Speak it out with me, this verse that we know so well. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. That's a promise for you today. That's a promise for you watching online today, that God gave His Son for you and I. Don't let that get old. Don't let that get tired for you. Let it be a fresh revelation for you this morning, because God loves you and sent His Son for you. Amen? 
There's a contrast between these two chapters. When Jesus uh, encountered Nicodemus in John chapter 3, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. But in John chapter 4, as we're going to look at today, Jesus actually goes to this woman in the day. Uh, Nicodemus, his name, the woman is not named. We don't know her name. He's a Nicodemus, a man, a Jew, a ruler. This woman is a Samaritan. She's an outcast. He is educated. He is powerful. He is respected. She's uneducated and she has no real influence. In fact, it seems like those that are around her despise her. These stories show us how Jesus crosses all boundaries. Doesn't matter how you've come this morning, doesn't matter what's happening for you online today, Jesus crosses all of these boundaries for you. John chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says that Jesus had to go through Samaria and you heard that, didn't you? Jesus had to go through Samaria and He didn't wait for the Samaritan woman to come across Him somewhere as Nicodemus came in chapter 3 and sought Jesus out, but actually Jesus went out of His way to find her. Uh, Normally, the Jews and Samaritans didn't spend a lot of time together. In fact, they avoided one another. And Jews would actually go around Samaria because there was a distance between them. There was animosity between these two people groups. In fact, so much so that the Samaritans had set up their own temple, not the temple in Jerusalem. They'd set up their own temple on Mount Gerizim. And so this just added to those layers uh, of distrust and trying to separate from one another, even though they both, both people groups believed in the same God. The important message for us today is just as Jesus had to go through Samaria, today He comes to you, He's crossed eternity, He went to the cross for you and I so we could have a relationship with Him and we could have eternal life, that He would come and speak to you, reveal Himself to you in a fresh way. Jesus went out of His way for you. Amen? Verse 7 goes on to say, uh, actually, I'm sorry, let's talk about the well first, the well. This is Jacob's well. And uh, in Genesis 33, we see that it was bought for a hundred pieces of silver. And then for generations, it sustained people for their physical thirst. There were people that would come and they would drink from this well. It was a, a well that had been dug centuries ago. And who knew the person that dug that well that is unnamed in Scripture that centuries later, uh, generations later, not only would it sustain, but here at City Life Church this morning, we'd be talking about this well. Verse 7 goes on to talk about the woman. A Samaritan woman came to draw water. This was the daily routine. And this encounter shows us the boundary crossing typical of Jesus when He asks this Samaritan woman for a drink. Now, when I was growing up in church, And I first heard this story. I wondered whether Jesus was just being a little lazy. Come on, let's be honest. When you first read that, why can't Jesus just do it for Himself? Well, He's got no container. Uh, The well is deep. There's no way that He can physically do this Himself. But also there are cultural complexities and layers to this story that as we work through, we can see what Jesus is up to. She's actually surprised as you saw that Jesus has even asking for a drink. He's not asking if he can get a drink, but he's asking about whether she can get him a drink in this Samaritan bucket that is unclean, uh, that Jews and Samaritans wouldn't have anything to do with her. And we know that there are two basic rules in this culture when you would go for water. Normally, you wouldn't go in the middle of the day. The Bible says it was about the sixth hour. That means it's about lunchtime, about 12 o'clock getting to the heat of the day. Normally you'd go early in the morning or late at night when it's a little cooler because this is heavy work. The second thing is that you would go in groups. It was a social event to go and get water. Groups would go together. Yet this woman, as Jesus highlights, is by herself. And uh, perhaps the local women knew about her reputation and ostracised her for that. You notice that she's got a bit of a tone with Jesus at the beginning, don't you? She's got a bit of attitude because the Jews thought they were superior than the Samaritans, that they were above them. They, 
They had the true worship space in Jerusalem. They had the real relationship with God and they kind of looked down their nose. There were cultural barriers separating them. But Jesus then comes to cross that divide and He starts to chisel away at her hard heart. And I pray that God through His Spirit, if your heart is hardened in any way, that today the Holy Spirit would also begin to just minister to your heart. She's been hurt through five husbands who've rejected her. And this current guy she's with doesn't honour her or respect her enough to take her as his wife. Rather, she can be somebody who is within his home. While it's not a perfect illustration, her rejection reminds me of some of the stories that we hear about racial injustice around the world and at times even in our own country. As I said, it's not a perfect illustration, but allow me to share it. Particularly when we had in the 40s and 50s and 60s, African-American people were told that they were to sit at the back of the bus. Remember this story? There was segregation. If you were white, you could sit at the front. If you were African-American, you had to sit at the back of the bus. And this created so much anxiety, so much racial tension. And then finally, there was a a lady who'd had a hard day at work one day and she went and sat on the bus. Her name was Rosa Parks. And uh, when a white man came onto the bus, was expecting her to move and uh, go stand at the back of the bus, she said no. And she stood up. And that began... Uh, a turnaround of segregation. Her name was Rosa Parks. That would, one event would lead to no more segregation. Jesus does the same thing for us. This simple illustration, if you would allow me to move it forward, is that when Jesus calls us onto His bus, there's no seats for Jews or Samaritans. Jesus has got a bus that everybody is welcome on, that everybody's invited, and He crosses every cultural divide, every barrier, and there is a space for you to encounter Him and to have relationship with Him. He says to this woman, hey, if you knew the gift, as He's chiselling away at that hard heart, He says, if you knew the gift that was within me, you would encounter this and you'd be asking me for water. This practical conversation about physical thirst moves to a spiritual overlay from the temporary to the eternal purposes that God has. And Jesus keeps digging into this hard, hurt, heart. We see the story goes on. And the encounter that they begin to have as he begins to speak to the deepest places of her heart. This is unbelievable for her. And you can see that literal physical transformation start to take place in her. When Jesus the Messiah reveals himself to her and uh, her life begins to be transformed And I pray that God would continually reveal Himself to each and every one of us to encounter Him in a fresh way. He is not trying to soothe your your physical thirst, rather your eternal purpose to give you living water. Jesus turns this well from a practical outcome into a spiritual transformation because Jesus offers living water. In John chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, he talks about this water. He says, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give them, that spiritual life, that living water, will never be thirsty again. The water that I give them will become a spring of water rising up within them that you will take this living water and as you are filled and Jesus uses this language and it refers to not a once off filling, but a constant filling and overflow. That's what happens when living water is within us. And this water is a gift from God, that living water. He says and promises that you will never thirst again because this overflow will take place within you It will be an eternity of refreshment and ongoing purpose. Are you thirsty this morning? I pray that you would be filled with living water to overflow. 
I pray that you would discover the purposes of God for your life, that you wouldn't, like all of us do at times, find some kind of quick fix to our thirst. You know, they tell us that some drinks make us even thirstier, even though we reach for sugary drinks or other drinks, they actually make us more thirsty. There are substitutes in life, isn't there? Maybe something new, a new car, hopefully that'll make me feel more, a new post on social media, new relationship. Insert whatever it is that you try to fill that void that only Jesus can fill with His living water for us. That purpose that comes for it. There is not a quick fix that you're gonna find in this world other than knowing Jesus. This woman had tried quick fixes. She'd tried relationships, but yet the only thing that was gonna fill that void for her was encountering Jesus and discovering the purpose that He has for us. It's great to see on that video earlier, the stories of Brian and Izzy. Uh, Brian and Izzy were in our life group uh, for a few years and uh, they've now moved down to the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. Uh, on the outskirts there. Isn't it great to see them living out their purpose? Isn't it great to see them stepping into the things that God has for them as as they've now retired? They've always been serving God in lots of different places and spaces. uh, But now at the Men's Shared Op Shop, intentionally looking to create relationships. And I know that there are hundreds and hundreds of people in our church community doing this every day, those watching online as well. When we discover our purpose, When we discover the things that God has for us, it allows us to step in. And even when storms come, your purpose keeps you. Remember when we were leading our first youth ministry almost 30 years ago. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Somebody so young could have been involved. Uh, And so, you know, I remember working in youth ministry, volunteering, serving. Sometimes it costs us more to actually lead in youth ministry and anybody that's led in youth ministry will know what happens and all the various challenges that you face. But but what an outcome. Seeing people take a step closer to Jesus. People taking a step closer to Him. And even when you face your own personal storms, when you know you're at the centre of God's purpose, His purpose will keep you and point you in the right direction. I was out to dinner a few weeks ago with some of our Hall of Fame uh, award winners this year. Great dinner. As you know, our Hall of Famers are people that have been in our church for generally 30, 35, 40 years, been serving, leading life groups and in various ministries. And uh, just as we were getting to the peppered beef, a lot of noise in the restaurant. And I heard one of the Hall of Fame uh, people say to me, we're not coming to church. And in that split second, I mean, you can imagine what happened within me as that pepper beef just starts to go down. I kind of coughed. I, I wasn't sure what I was hearing. I wondered whether I'd offended them in some way that, you know, just because I ate all the Peking duck. I mean, I didn't know that so many thoughts go through your mind in that split second. Then they probably saw the white in my face and all that was going on. Dowdgett was with me. He was perking me up. And uh, they said, we're not coming to church anymore for ourselves. We're coming to church for others. We're coming to church because we want to make sure that when there's new people in our church, that we welcome them. We want to make sure that we're talking to new people that are in our church and allowing them to encounter God wherever they are. And I thought to myself, here is a couple that still after 35 years in our church are on purpose. They are at the centre of all that God has for them. And we've realised that it's God's purpose that will sustain us and keep us and guide us. I thought, wow, after 35 or 40 years of serving, they still have the fire of God within them. And can I encourage you, these are examples for us to follow. The fourth thing uh, that we hear in this story is all about worship. You could hear that wrestle. Well, our songs are better than your songs. Uh, Mount Gerizim's got a better sound system. Uh, and Jerusalem, well, that's getting a little old and tired. Uh, The Jewish songs that we sing, well, aren't they anointed? Uh, It always makes me smile when uh, people tell me they didn't enjoy worship. I say, well, it wasn't for you. (laughs) And we were led so well this morning and 
in a few minutes' time, we're going to get the chance to watch six people go through the waters of baptism, and then we're going to sing together and worship our God. But don't limit worship to singing. Don't limit worship to what happens when we come together. Worship, our worship, is a response to that living water. That when we encounter the purpose that God has for us, that when we step into the things that He has for us, that we are experiencing that living water, that infilling, indwelling of His Spirit that is for you. Because this has been a problem right through the ages. In Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible says that my people have committed two sins. They've forsaken me, the living, the spring of living water, and they have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. You know, when we try to do things in our own strength, that we only get part of the way, it's broken. But when we allow God, that living water to come and fill us, to dwell within us, to allow His Spirit within us, that it is not tired, it's not something that we've been in a routine of, but God would allow His living water to flow in us in a fresh way each day, that we would encounter Him in worship and allow His purpose to become alive within us. You saw the impact it had for this woman, couldn't you? You could see her whole countenance change and she became an evangelist. She became somebody who went back to her village and she said, come and see. Come and see a man who's told me everything. Come and see the Messiah. And that's the message for us today, that as we live our lives, that our lives would overflow all of the things that God has for us, that our lives would have a message of come and see. Come and see the majesty of God. Come and see the goodness of a God who cares and loves each and every one of us. And Jesus would later tell, did you like that little bit at the end? The disciples had gone to get food uh, and they came back and they said, we've got some food for you. Are you hungry? He said, actually, my work is my food. That's what sustains me because I am on purpose because I'm at the centre of all that God has for me. My trust is in Him. He actually sustains me. Yes, this is natural food, natural water, thirst and hunger. But actually there is a spiritual passion that when you know you're at the centre of God's will, that He will sustain you, lead you, bless you and guide you. Amen. Just before we move into our baptism service, I want to pray for two groups of people. Perhaps you've never given your life to Jesus, as I said earlier, and you want to surrender your life to Him. Gee, I'd love to give it, you the chance to come and stand with me and pray and allow God to speak to you. Who'd like to be first? Has God been speaking to you? Normally we close our heads, we close our eyes, bow our heads. Maybe you're watching online, you want to type something into the chat. But if you're in the room... Hey, do you want to respond to Jesus? This could be the greatest moment of your life. This could be a new experience for you. Why don't you give me a wave? Just let me know that you're here. You want to give your life to Jesus. Perhaps this is something you've done a long time ago, but you know you're not living the way you should. You know that God's speaking to you. Why don't you give me a wave? Love the chance to pray for you. That you would experience all that Jesus has done for you. Hey, thanks, bro. Others this morning. Hey, anybody else? You know you haven't been living the way you should. You know that you've been distant from God and God's speaking to you. Hey, come on this morning. Online, you can put something in the chat. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, would you come? Give me a wave and I'm gonna actually ask you to take another step. Bro, why don't you come so I can pray for you? Others this morning, you wanna come, I'm gonna pray. But if you haven't raised your hand, quick, why don't you come? Come to Jesus. We're cheering you on. How you doing? What's your name? Andrew. Andrew. Hey, anybody else want to come with Andrew? Others this morning, maybe you're not right with God. Maybe you haven't given your life to Him. Andrew's taken that courageous step to give his life to Jesus. So awesome. 
Come on, why don't you stretch out your hands and let's pray for Andrew together. Loving God, thanks for Andrew. Thank You that he's your child. Thank You that as he gives his life to You, he encounters that living water that only comes from You. I pray that as he surrenders to You, that You'd come and minister to him, that he'd encounter You in a fresh way in Jesus' Name. God bless you, Andrew. I'm going to leave you with Daljit and Prabha. They're going to talk to you for just a minute. That's what we're about, folks. And there'll be people online this morning uh, that you've put something in the chat. I invite you to connect with our team that you can encounter Jesus in a fresh way. Excuse me, because I've got to come back this way because I can't jump up onto the stage. I know you'd like to see me do that. Hey, wonder this morning, just before we have our baptisms, where's the well that Jesus is going to call you to this week? That well that is a figurative place, that place that there is somebody waiting for you, somebody waiting for the message, the living water that you've got. There's a well that you are going to encounter this week. You know, I've encountered these wells. I remember one of the flight delays that I had over my years when I was working in my previous role, Sydney Airport, massive storms, uh, delay after delay after delay, just about every seat in the airport taken. There was one spare seat next to me. And I saw this lady from 20, 30, 40 metres away. She was making a beeline to my seat. Do you know what's amazing? That seat was specially prepared for her. And we had an hour together during this flight delay, just talking, talking about her business. She was in recruitment, talking about her family. It's amazing how open people will be during a flight delay. And yet we had a chance to encounter God. She split her time between Melbourne and Sydney and I invited her to our church anytime. There'll be a well this week that God has an opportunity for you. There's going to be words that you're going to speak. There's going to be deeds that you're going to do. There's going to be relationships that you're going to form because you had to go through a Samaria. You had to go to a well because Jesus has prepared it for you. Don't miss the well. Don't miss the opportunity. And that's what the call of God for us as a church community is as we step into the things that He has for us. Come on, why don't you let me pray for you? Loving God today, thanks for the example that Jesus gives us. He had to go through Samaria. He had to go to this well and He had to encounter this woman. Thank You for the transformation that we see. Thank You for Andrew this morning. And God, we pray through our church community that we would respond to You. Let that living water overflow within us. I pray for that refreshment for each person over these next few minutes. And I ask that You would come and speak to each one. And as we encounter that well this week, that place You have for us, those areas that You've prepared, those conversations, those deeds, those meals, those opportunities that the Spirit of God will become alive in each of us. We pray for those, pray for those encounters and pray for those lives being transformed in Jesus' Name. Come on, everybody said Amen.